My name is James. Um, I work for a company called Drawboard. Um, we have uh, two main apps. We specialize in like um, PDF markup and annotation. So this is one of our apps that I'm showing you in. This all all the stuff in. Um, but a lot of it has to do with um, making sure things are in the right place. Events, annotations, lines, um, overlaying things on other things. Um, so, for example, if we draw um, a line on here and we move it, we're using matrices under the hood to actually power that. Um, and I'll, I'll show you why in, in a second as well. So the, the bit that I work on is a, a real-time collaboration tool. So if somebody draws a line on the web client or the Windows client or the iOS or Android client, it needs to show up on the other things in the exact place in the documents that the other ones in, in every device. So um, with that, um, but each of these devices are all written in different languages. So for example, I work on the web stuff, so my, all my stuff is JavaScript, HTML, CSS, <coughs> the Windows clients, C -sharp .net, Objective C, Java. It's all we, we have it all. But there's the only true like cross platform language in anything we do is actually math. I can take a matrix transform, or I can take um, an algorithm, and the underlying basics, efficiency, all that stuff is going to be the same principles apply in any language. Um, there's a starting now. There's a lot of math. <laughs> I tried to like keep it down. It's it's a lot scarier looking than it actually is. <laughs> so let's let's start with that. Can everybody see that? <laughs> so we have an SVG. Um, in SVG, our, our, um, our origin's in the top left corner. And in this case, we've got a, a width height of 10 uh, SVG with a line in it starting from 0, 0, and going to 4, 4. On the left, we have the HTML markup. And on the right, we have the math. Um, math, we've got an A point and a B point, which are two-dimensional scalar values, values, and then, yeah. So, now if we wanted to translate this line to the right to and down to in, in SVG, on, on the left we can have the CSS on line, transform it, translate to to, which would push it right to, down to. Um, and on the right is the scary looking matrix transforms, which hopefully by the end of this talk it's not completely scary. <laughs> Don't know how good that's gonna go. But we can also do this notation on the right hand side in CSS with this line down here. So the top left, um, like the, um, this bit here, is the, the same as this, in this situation. Um, oh, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Can you explain uh, the transformation, uh, the matrix over there? Yeah. <laughs> like the blue, the blue and red. Yeah. So like, how come there is that one, zero, two? Yeah. Two, one, two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we have another 15 minutes of a talk, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, so um, mat matrices in this case are, are used to transform points on from one 
one thing to another, one scale to another scale, one, um, yeah. They're used to transform things in this case. The, if you notice in, in here we have, there's nine numbers and down here we only have six. Um, the way that those map together, that, sh um, that two shouldn't be a two, that should be, or that E shouldn't be an E over here. It should be a two, but um, <laughs> we can see that it goes A, the A, B, C, D, E, F, we go A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, we, don't, we don't have to care about the bottom three numbers in the matrix. So when we look at this, if um, uh, when uh, we look at this, we can see that up here, our translation of two and two, all we're doing is the last two digits in this matrix are the translation of the X and the Y. So E is going to translate the X value, and the F is going to translate the Y value. And everything else kind of builds on this sort of concept. So like, but how? <laughs> so if we look up here, this we're going to like sort of look at what's actually going on in that now. This over here is our, matri our transform matrix. This is a representation of our current point. And um, the way we get that is using scalar products to produce our new point. Um, which ends up looking like that <laughs> to actually figure that out. Um, which Yeah, what's going on there? So what's actually happening there is in, we're multiplying, everything that we're doing right now is actually multiplication. So in, in normal, normal multiplication, you take a two, multiply it by a four, and you get an eight. But what we actually have is sequences of values. So we can't just multiply a sequence of three numbers by another sequence of three numbers. We, we end up with some, we have to do something called a scalar product. So what's, what's happening here is to get the, um, our x1, what we're doing is we're multiplying our um, r1 by our c1. So c1's here, so our three our sequence of three values and our row here, sequence of three values. So we're multiplying the row one by column one and we get x one. We go into a little bit more. This, this is, it gets easier from here. I <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, we multiply basically the rows by the columns. Where the rows and the columns intersect is our values in our eventual um, matrix, which has our new x and y value. But we can't just multiply a sequence of three numbers together by another sequence of three numbers. So we have to use something called the scalar product. Does anybody remember, like, from high school maths FOIL? Like, First, outside, inside, last. Um, it's sort of like that. Um, in this case, we have a sequence of three things. So what we end up doing is we, we multiply these together, these together, and these together, and we add all those values together. So that's what we're doing up here, is we have the three values, so we multiply A by X, and then we add it to the multiplication of C and Y, and add it to the multiplication of E. And J. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, for example, in our, this is multiplying a 3 by 3 matrix by another 3 by 3 matrix. And we can see that the row 1 and the column 2, 
when we add it together, or when we do the scalar um, product, we get the row one column two value t. So we multiply r1 by c2, which would be a by k plus four by n plus c by q. In our actual matrix transform, we, we don't have to worry about as many columns. So we get very similar, but we only have one column. How many people are lost right now? <laughs> um, you don't necessarily have to worry about this. If you, if you end up having to use this, which I'll go into later, why you might have to use this, um, you'll definitely be figuring it out. <laughs> there's, there's a special case with matrices, though, where um, it's an identity matrix, and that's where we multiply any, any matrices we multiply with these matrices, if they are compatible with these matrices, will, will produce the same matrix. And we can tell it's an identity matrix by everything being zeros except for this diagonal line of ones that goes through it. So for example, we have a matrix, three by three matrix, a, a to i multiplied by our identity matrix, we get the same, the same matrix at the other end. So currently, we have a point, 4, 4. We, we change that into a matrix. So now it's 4, 4, 1. That 1 is just uh, it's there to basically make the math work. And uh, <laughs> we have a transform matrix. So we know, and that transform matrix, we know that, uh, we know that E and F translates X and Y when we multiply it to our, our B matrix. So when we do that in those, using our scalar products, we end up with six and six for it. That, um, that's all sort of just background, right? Like, um, I use a calculator for this stuff. Like, I'm not gonna bucket do this every day. It's so tedious. Um, so, like, why, like, why the hell would we do this? We have translate. Um, well, it's uh, we have tra transform matrices can do more than just translating things. We can scale things. We can rotate things. We can skew them. There's also three dimensional matrices that would just make all this stuff look like child's play, but. Um, we can compose them together. We can um, put multiple matrix transforms together and treat them as if they're one. Um, so in my case, when we, um, we draw a circle, and that might be some path data, and we translate it right we, that's, we just have that as another matrix, and then we move it up, that's another matrix. Um, then we uh, rotate it and scale it. Those, we can just keep adding those matrix transforms, not adding as a multiplicate, multiplying, um, composition is multiplication. Um, we can keep multiplying these transforms in and we can end up with a single transform that represents the current state of our current element relative to the original actual data that we had. So let's, and it's math, it, like math is universal. I can give these matrix transforms, these nine numbers to a guy writing C sharp or a guy writing Java or Objective-C and they can make the same points show up in the same places, even though their origin is actually the bottom left as well. We can 
we can just multiply it by an inverse <coughs> matrix. So we can get rid of the difference between the browser having a top left origin and, and basically every other thing ever having a bottom left origin. So an example of scale and rotate, I mean, this is literally just plugging numbers in to it. We put in, so scaling, we just, how we want it to be the x, the values on the x axis to be twice as big. We just make x a 2. We want the x, the values on the x axis to be half as big. We make it 0 0.5. If we want the rotation, we do um, 90 degrees. We go cos 90, negative sine 90, sine 90, cos 90. And we'll rotate it 90 degrees when we multiply that original value in it. And like, I mean, when we look at it, like, isn't that still easier, right? And yeah, it, it probably is for like when we're reading it. And if I'm writing CSS, I'm not going to do the matrix transforms. But when I'm having to calculate differences between a current point and a new point, the translations or the rotations of a user's event in JavaScript and things like that. I'm, that's not, those aren't numbers I'm having to look at. Those are numbers I'm calculating. They're numbers. They're already not easy to read. Might as well act. The matrices make them easier. They make them consistent. So for each of these values at the bottom, zoom in, we have the corresponding matrices going back to that original um, A, B, C, D, E, F sort of uh, thing, the actual matrices. So when we have these, these different matrices, and like this stuff down at the bottom is just straight math, right? We can, math gives us rules, math gives us consistency. Um, we, we multiply them together. We multiply it by our point of three and four. We get two and six. We've translated it, rotated it, scaled it, and translated it again. And because we have composition with the matrices, though, to get the same, we can just compress all that down into a single matrix that looks like that. And those, that top bit is equivalent to that bottom bit where this is what you'd have to do if you're writing them all out as translate this, translate that, translate this, scale that, where we can actually compress them down to a single value, which saves some bandwidth and overfetching and stuff like that as well. <laughs>